It's Paradise Hendrickson here, and I'm with a very talented and impressive young man from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dylan Olivier. How are you? I'm good, Nicole. How are you doing? I'm fine, and you're right now you're in Canada with me. Um, come, you're actually in transit. In transit, yeah. I'm in transit, yeah. Where are you coming from, Dylan? I'm coming from Ottawa, where I attended the One Young World Summit. The One Young World Summit gives young people from across the globe an opportunity to attend what I will consider the biggest global youth forum. And at this forum, you have the opportunity to discuss issues that affect young people, different issues from human rights to education to extremism. And at the, fo at the forum, they have different speakers who present on different topics. And I, I think that the focus and the, the founders of the organizations are doing an incredible job to bring together so much young people because it allows them not only to be educated, but to network and build a, um, a strong base where they could do work to create global change. Yes. Now, you are actually, you're actually called Her Majesty herself, Queen's Young Leaders of St. Vincent. Like, how, wow. What an honor. How, how did that go about? And you actually got to meet Her Majesty. It, it was indeed an incredible opportunity. Um, while the Queen's Young Leaders recognizes and celebrates exceptional young people from across the Commonwealth who are doing incredible work in their community. So what was the experience meeting Her Majesty? What was that like? What does Her Majesty smell like? <laughs> Everybody's wondering. Has it, have you ever, I've wondered that. What does she smell like? To be honest, the moment was so electric, like, to actually be in the presence of Her Majesty the Queen. I know she actually spoke to us, but to be honest, I can't remember what she said to me, but I know for sure I had to say something, so I was like, thank you for being an inspiration to young people. So I made sure I got my words across. Was it recorded so you could look back and no one was recording anything? The, the video clips were recorded. I have to um, ask the officials about getting the clip itself. So how do you become the Queen's Young Leader and what are the responsibilities of that title? Well, as I said before, the Queen's Young Leaders Award recognizes and celebrates exceptional young people who are making changes in their community. So if you feel or know that you're making positive changes in your community, you could go to the website and sign up. But at present, um, nominations for next year Queen's Young Leader is already closed and soon they should be meeting to shortlist applicants and hopefully, well, there will be one from St. Vincent again yeah. because I would love to see Vincentians embracing this opportunity. I think being a Queen's Young Leader, it adds a little extra light to you. Yeah. So it puts like a stamp of authenticity on you. Yeah. Because being a Queen's Young Leader, it means that you've been doing such incredible work and it's being recognized now. So other organizations will now look at you and say, well, hey, he's being genuine. He's been doing this now. Maybe we could help him to go further. And it's more about building any platform that they have helped you with because you have a year of a mentorship program, you have a year of um, online studies from the University of Cambridge. So it's about developing us so that we can continue on the work that we've been doing. So Dylan, you are a very talented poet. I think that's how I discovered you a few years ago. Remember we were, we were chatting a few years ago? And now I finally get to meet you in person, which is wonderful, because we always, we plan to do this. We said we'll get together and we'll do an interview and I'll put you on this show. And here, so said, so done. But you're very talented. Um, how did you get into poetry? I began writing while attending secondary school. There was this particular female that I had a crush on. <laughs> and I was very shy back in that time. So I said, well, I need to find a way so that I could express my feelings. And I got a pen, I got a book, and began writing. The, it, it didn't sound the way how I wanted it to, so I kept writing, kept writing, would rip out paper through it, and just keep writing until I managed to put the words how I wanted it to. And I kept writing and began to address issues, taking it more serious to address issues that affect young people, issues such as crime and violence, suicide, bullying, and environmental issues. So do you think that you can change or make a big difference through your poetry? I believe so. I believe as creatives we have the, the potential to create a major impact on the world because music, writing, poetry, any form of creative talent that you have, 
you, you immediately could connect to someone, connect to audience, because just by they reading or they listening, the, the, the piece that you have presented evokes emotions from them. And once you deliver your piece in such a way that it connects directly to them and makes them feel like they're within the moment, you would be able to create a positive change. Now I'm going to ask you, can you give us a poem? One that you memorized? Uh, I write so much. That a short one? Um, you think about that. I'll ask um, the next question. Um, if you could make a change, let's say in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, if there's anything you would change, let's say you became prime minister overnight, what kind of changes do you think that you could implement towards St. Vincent and the Grenadines? I think maybe having a youth parliament would be beneficial for St. Vincent and the Grenadines and maybe strengthening the, the National Youth Council and maybe also having um, youth ambassadors to represent the country because we have so many young people that are doing incredible things and I feel that we need to capitalize on what they're doing and also encourage them further. So by making them youth ambassadors, they will not only be doing something for their own good, but for the country and in promotion as well. So it could come in as a tourism product. They could be promoting the country in that way. So those are the things that will do the main things. So what are your other projects? What are you working towards changing? Well, I'm trying to, to encourage more young people to be involved in community work. Um, when I go back home, I already have an idea for a campaign that I want to begin putting together. Um, because of my network with the Queen's Young Leaders and members from One Young World, I now have a, a bigger network to work with. So hopefully everything goes according to plan and I'll fill you in more. Oh, you can't tell me much. You can't tell me anymore. No, I'll keep everything on the cover for me. Oh, come on. Seriously, tell me in a poem. <laughs> what I'll tell you, though, is that the campaign will be on an issue that, has, that affects females and an issue that has been affecting females for quite a while. And I feel now maybe it's time to tackle it from a different avenue. So that's all I'll tell you for now. <laughs> Wonderful. You're amazing. And tell us a bit about St. Vincent Grandines. Why are the people in St. Vincent Grandines so special in the island? I think it, it's, it's in our culture, <laughs> the way we were brought up. We're, we're a friendly set of people, so we welcome people to our island. And we, it's just the way how we move together. You could actually tell that people are from St. Vincent and Grenadines based on how they behave, because you're always seen, regardless of what, that. Once it's important and you're doing something good, at the end of the day, Vincentians will come out and support you. So who inspires you? Who's your inspiration? I, would, I wouldn't exactly say a person inspires me. But what, what, what I would say is that because of the problems I see in the world, I feel that it's our responsibility to do something about it. So that, that is what inspires me, to actually be the change that Gandhi said, be the change that you want to see in the world. So I'm doing my part to be the change I want to see in the world. And knowing that there's this huge network of young people who's doing the same, I feel even more inspired to continue doing the work that I'm doing. Where do you find the confidence to put yourself out there? Because you have to have some kind of confidence within yourself. Are you a confident person or did you just have to like dig deep? I think it was a matter of digging deep because I was a very shy person. Yeah, I, I, heard, I remember that because you said you were shy, so shy that you couldn't tell the girl that you like. Um, so all of a sudden now you're like visiting the Queen and, and traveling. How do you go from there to there? I think visiting the Queen, one thing that I've gathered from that is that we should dream big, don't limit ourselves. So uh, my attitude towards a lot of things has changed since then. So it's now like embracing all opportunities presented to you. And by embracing these opportunities, it's not only for my development, but to show other youths that they too can embrace these opportunities and achieve what they want to achieve in life. So now, Dylan is going to read us one of his poems. This poem is one that I have big plans for. It's called The Truth Is. The truth is far from the conception created by the heart and mind of a woman who was subjected to mental, physical, and emotional abuse. The heart and mind ignores the sign of a relationship spiraling out of control simply because she is told, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. 
Unfortunately, it does happen again and again. The heart, however, have faith in him. Knowing this, he says, I love you more than anything. That's all I leave you with, Nicole. Oh my gosh, it's so deep. I love That's all we get, but it was wonderful. Thank you so much, Dylan, for spending some time with us. And I hope you have a safe trip. Where are you heading to right now? Well, I'm heading to Trinidad, and then I'll head to St. Vincent after. It was a pleasure being here, being interviewed, so that everyone can know what's going on. And thank you very much. Boss! 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 Caribbean Connections TV will bring the Caribbean and its flavors to our viewers in a fresh, vibrant way that will entertain as well as educate. It's your direct connection to the Caribbean experience. Caribbean Connections TV. Buckle your seatbelts. This is going to be an exciting, fantastic, energetic, soul-stirring ride. So don't you move.